Hello, hello. Today's video is going to be a VFX breakdown slash tutorial of the Darth Vader scene that I made last week. And OBS transition. Boom. I have a shortcut for that now. So lots of you have probably already seen the video that went up last week. If you haven't, it's probably worth checking it out before you watch this video. I was just in a bit of a Star Warsy mood and fancied making something that was kind of cinematic and kind of fun. I was messing around with some cloth simulations for a cape for something else and just thought this would be a fun project. The first thing I did was I downloaded a model of Darth Vader. I got it from Sketchfab. I didn't actually make this. So let me just bring up where I got it from so you can see. Yeah, now that was loud. This is the one that I used. It's from um, a guy called Constantine Koratis... Koratiski. But yeah, it's a very cool model. So I downloaded this and then I bought it into Blender. I had to rig it myself. It doesn't come rigged, but that's pretty simple. If you're interested, the rig looks like this. Then the next thing I did is make this scene. And in the video, it looks quite complicated. There's a lot of textures and stuff on the wall that make it look like there's more going on than there actually is. This is what it looks like in material preview mode. So I used a lot of textures.com stuff. But if I look at it in solid view, you can see that it's actually pretty simple geometry. I just basically built like an archway for the door. Um, I found this model of like a space corridor on 33D.com. I made these kind of lighting boxes because I knew it'd be quite cool to have some emission uh, lights going on in the background and then I could put some lens flares and stuff going on with them. And then all of these little bits are from a kit bash kit that I have that's like sci-fi mechanical parts. So I just kind of scattered these around. The way I usually like to work is I put more effort into the foreground than the background. So you can see that in contrast, the foreground has quite a lot of detail in the actual model compared to the background where it's mainly textures. It's quite a good way of saving yourself some work sometimes. I knew that the background in most of this was going to be out of focus or dark, so I knew that it didn't need quite as much attention. I also added these hanging cables just to add a bit more interest of the ship silhouette when you're looking at it through the camera's perspective. I still need to practice my environment building a bit. I'm not amazing at it at the moment. I just kind of chuck things at it and hope it looks cool. Uh, this turned out okay, but definitely could have been better. So once that scene was set up, I used that for all six of the shots and then just put the camera in different places essentially and did some stuff with his pose and his lightsaber and things. The first shot is just kind of setting the scene where it's slowly creeping in on him which looks quite cool, it's quite cinematic. I've got the planet going on in the background which looks like this. And then I did a load of atmospheric stuff in comp just to add some smoke and things into the foreground and a bit of a glow on the edge of the planet, which I'll show later. Then onto some of the fun stuff. The cape is a really simple cloth simulation. The way I did this is I went into weight paint mode and I added a gradient. You can do this by holding alt and then clicking and dragging and it will just add a weight gradient across the entire mesh depending on where you drag it. And then what you do with this is set this as the pinning vertex group in the cloth simulation settings, which means that the stuff at the top isn't gonna move and the bottom of his cape is gonna blow in the wind. So to do that, you would just go into here and add a cloth simulation onto it and then I didn't really change any of the settings apart from obviously adding this as the weight group. To do that, you just go under the shape menu and set the vertex group that you did the weight painting in to be the pin group here. I usually turn up the quality. I think it defaults to two. I normally do about five or 10 just so it looks a little bit nicer. To get it to actually blow in the wind, I added a force field and then a wind force field. And then I just kind of positioned it roughly where I wanted it to be and then turn the strength up really high. For some reason, you have to set it to like 2000 for it to actually do anything. That might just be a scale thing with my scene. So anyway, I cranked the strength up really, really high. And then what I did is I also added a keyframe onto the rotation. So if I just hit I, add one keyframe for rotation. And then if I go into the graph editor, under the object transform, I can open this and I've got X, Y, and Z rotation. Just realized I should probably turn on screencast keys so you can actually see what I'm doing. There we go, now you can see what I'm doing, cool. So if I select the wind force field again, and then I hit N, it opens up this menu on the side. If I go to modifiers, add modifier, noise modifier. This will now allow me to kind of give some random rotation to the wind force field. So I can crank this scale up a little bit so it's not so erratic and then turn the strength up as well so it's more exaggerated. I basically just don't want it to be static. So once that's looking pretty good, then I can press this button which copies the modifier and then I'm gonna add it onto Y and Z as well. So I go to Y, paste it on here. I usually change the settings a little bit just to add even more variation. And now if I hit play on this, you can see that the wind force field is moving quite organically. You can also do the same thing to the strength as well. So if I hover over strength and press I, you can see that now strength appears is here and I can paste that modifier on here as well. And then in the middle of this shot, we have the spark burst, which just kind of drops down from the ceiling. I just thought this would be quite cool to add some visual interest. It's a really, really simple particle simulation. There's a little icosphere up here that emits some sparks. I just set it to emit 246 particles over the space of about 13 frames. They've got a lifetime of 50. I didn't really change many of the settings here either. Just under the velocity, I set the normal to 0.3, just so they have a bit of outward um, velocity, I suppose. And then I set the Z velocity to be minus two, so they shoot downwards quite quickly. And then I set them to render as an object, and I just have an icosphere so they're all kind of rendering as these low poly icospheres which look like this and I cranked the scale randomness right up so there's some variation in the size as you can see and then the thing that makes these sparks look good is 
if I turn all this stuff off, there's a material on them that makes them change color as they get older. This is the shader to make the sparks. As you can see, they kind of change colors. So they start off white and then some of them get a bit more yellow as they get older. All you have to do to make this is add a particle info node and then you add a math node and set it to divide and then plug in the age and the lifetime. And then after that, you just add a color ramp node and set some points on here that will be the color of the sparks as they go over time. This goes into an emission shader, which makes them glow. And then I just crank this up to something quite strong, like 15, so they're very visible against the black background. And I rendered these as a separate element and just combined it in compositing with the rest of the footage. They're all kind of the same thing. This one has some dust particles that you can see floating around in the air. I did that for a few of the shots just to add some atmosphere, as well as some 2D smoke elements and stuff that I placed in Nuke. And then the only one that's a bit different is shot five. And this is the one where the stormtrooper is in the background. So it starts off just a close up on him and then the camera moves to the side slightly and you see the stormtrooper again i just got a model of a stormtrooper off of sketchfab i think i downloaded the model had to rig it myself and then uh, just sort of animated a rough breathing animation for the stormtrooper it's so out of focus in the actual shot once i've comped it that you don't really read any of the information back here anyway but this is what it looks like before it's defocused and then the rest of the magic was done in Nuke and compositing to make it all kind of bed together and look nice. Okay, so this is the Nuke script. As you can see, pretty simple. Haven't done too much to it. It's mostly just combining all the bits together. This is before the color grade, so I made it a bit punchier and stuff in DaVinci just to make it pop a little bit more. But essentially, it starts off as some stars, which looks like this. Hopefully you can see this with the YouTube compression. I've talked about this in quite a few YouTube videos now, but very briefly, it's just some geometry. I've got the camera from Blender, and then I just put a card in the background. And then I just use a noise texture and then punch a load of contrast into it with a grade node. And that basically gives you the look of a load of stars in the background. Then on top of that goes the render of the planet. It came out of Blender looking like this. And then I did a little bit of defocusing onto it, a bit of edge blur just to remove that harsh edge and then a bit of glow as well. And then I did a secondary glow that was much bigger like this. That just gets combined together like that. So before planet, a bit more atmosphere. Then on top of that goes the ship render. So this is all the stuff in the background and the platform that he's standing on. Then on top of that goes the render of the sparks, which come in about here. So this is the render with the motion blur. It looks kind of nice. You can see all the variation in the colors. I did an erode on them just to make some of them a bit thinner. And then there's a few levels of glow and they go on top of the footage like this. Then there's the render of Vader. Pretty simple, didn't do too much to this. Um, that's before and that's after. So as you can see, not much changing. The only thing I really did is I used uh, a cryptomat of his head just to lift it slightly so it would stand out more against the black background. So as you can see, this is before and after just makes it a bit more readable on the silhouette. And then on top of that just goes some smoky bits. I think this particular one is from Action VFX. All I did for this is I used the 3D camera from Blender again, placed this on a card in 3D space in Nuke. One cool trick for getting some of the colors of the scene into the smoke is you can take the stuff before the smoke goes on top, blur it quite a lot like this and then screen that on top of the smoke. And what it does is add some of the colors from the background and makes them feel like they're coming through and diffusing in the smoke. And a lot of the time it helps to make the smoke feel a bit more embedded into the shot. You don't really notice it so much in this one, but I'll show another shot in a bit where you see it kind of over the top of the lights where it's more obvious. Then on top of that, I add a glow that's just making a bit of a bloom effect over the whole shot. Then I put a little bit of chromatic aberration just at the edges of the frame. This is quite a good thing to put on full CG shots just because it mimics real world lighting interaction when light goes through lenses and stuff. So it makes it feel a bit more realistic. And then finally, I just did some lens distortion. Again, this is just mimicking what would happen if you filmed it through a real lens. So because this is quite wide angle, I think this is an 18 millimeter lens on the CG camera. The lens distortion just makes all those straight lines curve a little bit and makes it feel a bit more realistic. So that's the final shot. Let's have a look at some other ones. This is shot two. This is kind of the same thing again. So we've got the stars going on up here in the background. Then on top of that goes the render of the ship. I added some nice glows and stuff onto the render of the fluorescent tubes just to make them feel a bit more bedded in. So this is the render on its own. I separated out the emission pass and did some glows and stuff onto this. And then I've also got this horizontal flary thing that makes a load of kind of anamorphic -y streaks um, from all the light sources in the shot. Borrow this from a load of setups at work that I've seen people using. It just takes the emission pass and then blurs it at loads of different increments and then pluses them all together, which gives you this. And then a bit more blurring and a bit of color onto that, plus it on top. And it just gives this nice kind of horizontal flaring, which looks quite cool. Then on top of that goes the render of the dust. This probably isn't super visible because of the compression on YouTube, but this is what this looks like. I just did a part particle system and just rendered a load of dust particles floating around in the air. If you want to do this, basically just turn off the gravity and put a turbulence field or something in there to make them go in random directions. Then Darth Vader goes on top of that. Obviously his lightsaber needs to glow, so I've got a separate setup just to make his lightsaber glow. And I've got a little curve generator on here that's making it flicker as well. So over the course of the shot, the exposure goes up and down, which makes it feel like it's kind of pulsing or flickering, as you can see here. Then on top of that goes a load of dust and smoke and stuff. This is another smoke element that I have from Action VFX. It's on a card in 3D space again, like I did with the one before. And then like I said before, I've blurred the whole scene so that you get all the lights coming through from the background and screened this on top. So you get some of the blues coming through from the fluorescent tubes and some of the highlights reflecting off the metal. And then also the red of the lightsaber is coming through here just very subtly. That goes on top, which looks like this. 
And then again, we've got some glows, some aberrations, some lens distortion, and that's what that shot looks like. The setup for the last shot is a little bit different, and as you can see, it's really, really simple. It's just the render of the background. I added a little bit of contrast into it, and then stupidly, I forgot to put a black material on the gun. So I rendered this as white. So what I did to fix that in comp is I just used a cryptomat for the gun, uh, and then just used it and graded it right down. It has a bit of a horrible outline on it because I'm making such an extreme change, but once it's defocused, you can't see that, so it's fine. Then what I'm doing here is I'm using a node called Bokeh Blur that I got from Nukipedia. It's a pretty cool node. It lets you do a 2D defocus, but it lets you use a kernel to influence the way the Bokeh looks, or Bokeh, however you say it. And if you don't know what a kernel is, it looks like this. I've got a whole library of these on my hard drive, and this is what they all look like if I turn this off. So you can see there's a load of different ones that are different shapes and sizes. Some of them have quite defined edges, like the blades of the aperture inside the lens and some of them are a bit more circular a lot of them have these kind of cool blobs and stuff inside which just make a little bit of a difference to the way the bokeh looks and basically what it helps to do is create these kind of cool looking circles that you can see that are being picked up in the highlights and you can even see on this that there's some kind of chromatic aberration -y stuff going on here where it's kind of got some blue fringing this is probably a bit of an extreme example but this is quite a stylized piece anyway but it just really helps to make it look quite nice i really like defocusing stuff with kernels it stops it doing that kind of generic bloomy defocus thing where you just kind of blur stuff in 2d and it really helps to make all this CG stuff look like it was filmed through a real lens. Then obviously Vader goes on top of that, which looks like this. Then on top of that, I put an actual dust element that I found online. I used an element for this instead of doing something in Blender, just because this element was pretty perfect for it already. And it has a load of really nice detail in kind of the different levels of depth of field inside of the shot. So that's before and after makes all the stuff in the atmosphere feel quite turbulent and then again we've got the glows and the chromatic aberration and the lens distortion and that's what that looks like so there we go it's pretty much the same thing for all of the shots it was just rinse and repeat change the camera angle press render do it again <laughs> this is kind of like a taster project for a much bigger animated short film idea that i really want to get my teeth stuck into soon hopefully this tutorial slash breakdown thing was interesting as an insight into how i did some of the shots and hopefully you learned something which is obviously the idea thank you very much for watching remember to like and subscribe the files for this are on my patreon for a dollar if you're interested and picking them up and yeah see you next time i'm waiting for the calm as the storm is getting under my skin i'm trying to fix the hole in my head where